Welcome to Nancy Gaskins Talks Business. My name is Nancy Gaskins and I am your host. Folks, you can listen live by computer or by telephone by calling in at 347-857-1169. That's 347-857-1169. All my shows are recorded and archived so you can listen and learn online all year long 24-7. On today's episode, you're going to meet Robin Brimmer, also known as Ribbons the Clown. Robin is an ordained minister who has appeared on the Tom Leading TV show, In God You Will Succeed, and several radio shows. She's also a comic ventriloquist, motivational speaker sharing key working the kingdom system. Her calling is to bring God's presence and supernatural power through the message of the kingdom of joy and to set people free from a godless religion of doing and work into a personal, supernatural relationship with Jesus. Robin is the author of Raising the Dead, Angels, Supernatural Wine, and Other Normal Christian Experiences. You'll certainly want to listen in today because Robin is going to offer a free download for everyone listening on today's episode. Welcome to the show, Robin. Well, thank you. I'm really excited to be here today. So tell us a little bit about your background, where you grew up, any hobbies that you have, uh, any experience, anything interesting that you'd like to share that I've not mentioned that we're not going to get into yet on the interview? Okay. Well, basically, I grew up in Pennsylvania, um, and uh, I grew up in a church, but I only went to church, uh, you know, on special occasions, and I found that it was extremely boring, (laughs) and that's kind of where I've come from. Uh, in my background and my thinking, I would think, man, there's got to be more to life than this. And I would lay out on my hill at night, and I'd look up at the stars, and the stars always revealed God to me. They always fascinated me. And that was the beginning of my journey of seeking more from God. And from there, I... Uh, go ahead. ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say, from there, I... Um, said something uh, that, that caught my attention because it's the same thing that I've been saying for years. It drives me nuts that people say that Christians, or they think that Christians are boring. I've got news for you, but I'm a Christian of mine. Anything but boring. <laughs> and I tell people, I'm like, you guys, and I grew up uh, Southern Baptist. I say that I'm Christian first. Uh, and most of the time now, I've been attending and uh, members of a non-denominational church. But my deal is, you sit on that pew and you look like you've got a bunch of sour grapes in your mouth. What kind of witness is that? Who wants to be that? Who wants to be cranky? <laughs> Who wants to be a sour to be? That is not right. what God intended, in my opinion. That's my humble opinion. But anyways, I find that interesting that you said that. So I'm going to be quiet and uh, let you go ahead. <laughs> well, I... I um, Later on, I became a clown. I got some birthday money, and I became a clown. And as a clown, I was around ministering to churches. And when I would go to churches, I would discover that they would have all these objections. Um, like, uh, I'd want to pray for them, and they'd say, well, don't pray for me. I'm sick because God's teaching me a lesson. Well, I'd think, you're crazy, lady. Who would want a God like that that would make you sick to teach your lesson? If your dad made you sick to teach your lesson, he'd, he'd go to jail. And so that was the beginning of my books, I would um, make a little booklet to overcome these different objections, and eventually these booklets became 33 different books, (laughs) and that's how I got started in being a clown and combined the clowning and the teaching the Word of God together. So what made you decide to become an ordained minister? What was your path there? Well, actually... I had learned a lot just from the Holy Spirit, and I decided, well, if I'm going into different denominations, I needed to have some kind of credibility and uh, some solid teaching. So uh, I first I was licensed, which takes hours and hours of training and, and being on probation for a year. And then I was trained through John Hunter Ministry, which is a supernatural signs and wonder people get healed kind of ministry. And I was ordained through her, which is more of hours and hours of classes and participation. And and uh, that's how I was ordained. And I just wanted the credibility in all denominations. And that's the reason that I decided to get ordained. 
So we're going to dig into your book here. Uh, I find this so interesting, and I'm sure anybody who looks at that would go, whoa, I'm going to repeat it <laughs> once again. Robin is the author of, listen to this, Raising the Dead, Angels, Supernatural Wine, and Other Normal Christian <laughs> Experiences. <laughs> what, what's been your response to that so far? I know I, know I didn't... Uh, give you that question, but I, I'm just kind of curious, because when I, when I saw it, it really piqued my interest. Well, you know, what I'm finding out is people are desperate. They are tired of of religion. There's a difference between religion and Christianity, and a lot of people would think that Christianity or religion is both uh, trying to be good, and, you know, that was just a problem that stood in the way with fellowship with God. The ultimate goal is fellowship with our Father, our Daddy God. And so taking the sin out of the way allowed us to have a relationship with him. And most Christians think it's about a good lifestyle, but you know what? That's the fruit of the root. When you have a relationship with a supernatural God in a supernatural way, you fall so in love with God that the bad behavior falls off. The bad behavior is no longer a problem. And I'm finding that so many Christians are desperate to have that peace and to have God's presence. And, of course, I get a mixed response. They say, well, I was expecting more stories of raising people from the dead, or, oh, you have too much scripture in it. So, you know, basically people are hungry, and they, they want a supernatural God. Well, let's dig into a few of these main huge questions that I'm sure that people might think they know the answer to, and mm. your response might surprise them. <laughs> Opinion, Robin Brammer, what <laughs> is a Christian? A Christian, according to the Word of God, it says in the book of Romans that the wages of sin is death, and all of us have fallen short of the glory of God. All of us have sinned and fallen short. And the Word of God says that that the result of sin is death. We were all born like the it gets like. We, Adam fell. Adam became a sinner. Everyone after him became, became a sinner. So God solved the problem. He sent his son Jesus to die for us. Uh, and anybody who accepts that gift of Jesus dying for us and paying for our sins becomes a Christian. That is what is a Christian, is somebody who receives the gift of our past, present, and future sins being paid for and is now reconciled back to God and a child of God. And it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so they say that the Bible is... Uh the most popular book in the world and has been since the beginning of, uh, you know, it, it first became published, I guess. And they say most families have more than one copy hanging around, but unfortunately, uh, more than likely, those copies have dust on them instead of sitting there next to the bed and being used like they should. So give us your take on what is the Bible. Well, the Bible is basically a covenant. There's the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. The Old Covenant is way, was made with the Jews, and the New Covenant is also made with uh, born-again new Christians, which when Jews ask Jesus to come into their heart, they're called completed Jews, um, and they are, you know, born again. But the Bible is a covenant, and a covenant is a blood-signed agreement between two people, Two groups of people or two people uh, sharing what one is weak with, the other is strong with. For example, there's farmers and warriors. Warriors are good at fighting. Farmers are good at collecting food. So they be, they make a covenant and they share. The farmer shares their food with the warriors. The warriors protect the farmers. And the Bible is a covenant, a blood-signed agreement, signed in the blood of Jesus uh, between man and God and well, actually, Jesus and God, and we came in under Jesus. When we received Jesus, we get in on that covenant. Everything he receives, we receive. We become part of the covenant. So the New Testament is like a love story and is also a covenant promises guaranteed because Jesus paid for them with his blood. So you need to read the Bible, especially the New you Testament. You certainly do, and more than one time. <laughs> Right, right. You learn something you new every time, it. and depending on what season of life that you're in, it's amazing uh, how the Word will speak to you in different ways. Right. Okay, what right. is the kingdom of God? Well, the kingdom of God, Jesus actually brought the kingdom. It changed from the Old Covenant to the New Covenant, and the kingdom of God is the government of God. 
the power, the authority, the dominion of God. And Jesus, if you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, he talks about the kingdom of God is here, and men are pressing into it. And he demonstrated the kingdom by casting out demons, cleansing the leopards, raising the dead, preaching the good news that you don't have to be poor, uh, the gospel. And the kingdom of God, he, he, when he died, he sent back the Holy Spirit to come inside of us. And the kingdom of God is the Holy Spirit em- empowering us to enforce God's will on earth. It's God's kingdom inside of us. And that's when he, by the stripes of Jesus, we have been healed, and Jesus paid for that on the on the cross with the whipping. So we lay hands on people or we pray for people or we command people to be healed. And that is God's government bringing that like heaven on earth here in our bodies and in our lives. And the kingdom of God is God's government inside of us. Did I explain that? Well, (laughs) yeah, you did. You did actually. Uh, The Trinity is one of the things that confuses a lot of people and they can't quite grasp them. Uh, mind around the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, no matter whether you're a, a born-again new Christian or an old one, sometimes, you know, we get confused, but I thought it was interesting, and I like the way that you... Well, the Holy Spirit is part of the Trinity. There is only one God, and He is spirit, soul, and body, just like we're created in His image. God the Father, Jesus... Be- it became flesh, so that's the flesh, and then the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the like the muscle of God, the power of God, the emotion of God, and He comes to live inside of us as the, as God's representative, as God's Spirit, and He teaches us, He guides us, he, he empowers us, and He enforces the kingdom of God in us. The Holy Spirit is our best friend because the Holy Spirit is connection to us, to Jesus, and to us, to God. And basically, Jesus did do all the work. He died for us, and the Holy Spirit enforces that and connects us with God the Father, which is God's deepest desire. Okay. In your book, in your title, very intriguing, you talk about the supernatural. Some people would probably say they don't think the supernatural is very normal. But according to you, you say Quite the contrary. Can you elaborate on that? Yes. Um, first of all, Satan can only copy the real thing. He can only uh, be something that originally uh, that already exists. And God is the creator of everything. And God is a supernatural being. And so, the supernatural belongs to the Christian. And the whole Bible is su- supernatural. It comes alive. Everything in the Bible we can experience. And we experience through the Holy Spirit living in us. And um, we need, as Christians, we are not normal. We are supernatural. We are aliens. Our home is in heaven. And created in God's image, we should be having a supernatural relationship with God. And many times Christians are afraid of the supernatural because they say, you know, it's the, of the occult. But the thing is, the supernatural is the Christian's first. And then the occult has stolen it from us and made the Christian afraid of it. But in reality, we should be experiencing angels and the joy, the wine of heaven and God's presence and his heaviness, his glory, um, uh, glory powder, uh, glory. People have um, uh, gold dust come on them. These should be normal experiences with every Christian. One of the things that I'm kind of rolling around in my head right now as you talk about that, reminds me of, uh, for example, women, when you first found out you were pregnant, before you knew that, uh, you went about your daily life and didn't really notice anything, but the second that you found out you were pregnant, boy, you were seeing pregnant women everywhere you (laughs) went. It didn't matter, you know, or if you bought a new car, nobody in town had that color car, that kind of car, and then all of a sudden. So I'm wondering, as Christians, Maybe we have got something going on around us. What, what do you think? I I totally agree. You see, the more uh, the word says that the more you hear something, the more you get of it. So the more you hear, you're, the more you read the Bible and see that the supernatural experiences in the Old and New Testament are for you, the more you will begin to notice things around you. When you focus on what you have available to you and you are aware of it 
you will begin to experience it. So your eyes will become open, just like you said. You see the same color when you love a car and you start seeing it, or when you're pregnant, you start noticing pregnant women, pregnant clothing, babies. It's the same thing with the supernatural. You will walk in it, your eyes will be open to it, and you will begin to experience it. So would you care to share maybe some of your supernatural experiences that you have? Well, a lot of them are in that book, but one of my favorite ones is when I danced with Jesus. Uh, I was in praise and worship for about 45 minutes in in a church I used to go to, and I always just had my eyes closed and praising and worshiping Jesus, and I was just getting ready to leave, and all of a sudden, a really romantic worship song came on, and Jesus appeared to me, and he just put his hands, one hand on my hip, and he took my hand in the other hand, and he started dancing with me. And he would spin me out and spin me in and dip me and twirl me and spin around me. And it was really awesome. But what was the most awesome to me was the look in his eyes. I saw love in his eyes, but I saw something else that I, that I never expected. And for a couple of days, I pondered on that and said, what is it that I see in his eyes? And it was playfulness. He was enjoying playing with me. And that is so much what the Christian needs is that a kind of an experience every day with God because he is so much fun. And I tell you, if Christians had that smile on their face and had that supernatural encounter with God, they would draw so many people to God instead of saying, you're going to hell, you know. God wins people by his goodness, and we need to experience a relationship is experience and trust. I agree. I agree. I, like I said before, it just kills me that people want to, you know, be negative and all of that. Who wants to be that? We should be that shining light on a hill so that everybody would want what we had. And I right. We, uh, as Christians, we fall so short. But I, you know, I, I'm beginning to see uh, a little turn, I think. And I think that. I don't know if it's because of the Internet or uh, what, but I'm thinking that uh, Christians are starting to wake up, and I know we need a major, major revival uh, in not only our nation but around the world. And I, I hope right. that that's coming soon before uh, the end comes. Mm. So what, what kind of misconceptions do you think there are on healing the sick? Well, you know... 2,000 years ago, Jesus provided healing for everybody, just like he provided salvation. The only thing, it has to be received. And so many times people get caught up in, quote, religion and wrong thinking, and they don't receive uh, the truth about healing. It's already been done. God's not holding it from us. He's, he's, he's did it for us. He wants us healthy, just like a daddy wants his child healthy. But I hear so many misconceptions like... Um, uh, God's teaching me something. God's getting glory out of the sickness. When God wants me healed, he'll heal me. Uh, what, he wants this person healed, but not maybe not me. I believe in healing, but will he really believe me? And <clears throat> there's so many misconceptions about it that Christians are just as sick as the world. And I think one of the things is once we get over these misconceptions, realizing that our dad is love and he does not put or even allow sickness, disease, poverty, lack, or fear to come on us. He took care of that at the cross. And when we begin to walk in our authority and our dominion, not only will the Christians be healthy, but we'll be commanding health and healing to the dead and to uh, growing out limbs, replacing body parts. It's all available for us. We all can walk in that supernatural power. And the misconception, I have one of my books written on, wrong believing about healing. And when, when you study things like that, when you hear it in the, the truth in the word, then you begin to change. And when you change, you bring revival and you change everything around you. Some powerful stuff today, folks. Robin, I thank you so much for joining us today. I do have your links with on the episode, but for those of you just listening, you can go find out more about Robin at her website. She has a blog at robinbremer.net. That's R-O-B-I-N-B-R-E-M-E-R dot net. Today's guest was Robin Bremer, also known as Ribbons the Clown. Go out there and order her book. And uh, Christians, uh, 
this is your call to arms. Go out and arm yourself and uh, bring others to Christ. I thank you for joining us today. Join us next time. You'll be listening to Nancy Garrison Talks Business, Transforming America, One Entrepreneur.